For American troops serving in Afghanistan, one killer has surpassed all others, the improvised explosive device. They have either taken the lives or shattered the bodies of more than 8,000 U.S. service members in that war over the last decade. And they are such a relentless scourge because they are so easy to make, with little know-how and a couple ingredients that turn out to be disturbingly easy to buy. Here's ABC's Nick Schifrin for our series, Nightline Investigates. Down every rutted road in Afghanistan, nothing scares U.S. troops more than this. An IED just blew up beneath this truck. IED, is everyone in the bed? IEDs are the U.S.'s enemy number one in Afghanistan. Oh my ears! They've killed or wounded more than 8,000 American troops, and the numbers are getting worse. This is close to gets to the source of all of our problems. IEDs. Meet Sergeant Stacy Klingen. He's an explosives ordnance detection technician, better known as a member of a bomb squad. It's like playing a game with the insurgents. Who gets to it first? You know, who makes it blow up first? Us or them? Yeah, looking to be a long night, but hopefully everybody makes it back here safe. That's Klingen's team leader, Staff Sergeant Terry Schofield. On 9-11, he was a freshman in high school. He joined the military after he graduated and deployed to eastern Afghanistan six months ago. What really surprised me is the amount of IEDs. How many? Well over 100. Well over, probably over 200. One of those bombs killed Staff Sergeant Mike Garcia on the 4th of July. But it wasn't a random blast. The Taliban rigged a bomb just for him. He was my first team leader. He taught me how to survive here. And after Garcia died, Schofield replaced him. And how's that affected you? sucks but you learn from what they did wrong what they taught you and what they were doing right you just drive on get the job done but this is no ordinary job it's intense it's like a roll of dice every time you drive down the road here you're not gonna find everything before you roll over it you know on this evening a call comes in an IED buried in a road we set out in a convoy of armored trucks at the scene Schofield walks to where the IED is buried we aren't allowed to follow, so we filmed it from inside the truck. Schofield finds a 40-pound bomb. So when you're out here, how do you stay safe? Distance. Stay away from it as far as possible. To keep that distance, they use a robot, armed with the highly explosive C4, to detonate the IED. The robot takes the risk, so the men don't have to. Inside the truck, Klingon navigates the robot using a screen and a joystick. And then, after the robot drops the C4 on top of the IED, after everyone is ready... Fire the hole! That bomb could have killed four soldiers, even in an armored vehicle. Uh, we had an IED, uh, single jug, approximately 40, 45 pounds. Splattered everywhere, road's safe. After packing up, they head home to the Afghan version of CSI. This, this might be the most important part of what we do. Every bomb carries a signature of its creator, so Klingon tries to find a fingerprint or a piece of DNA. It goes into the system, and if, you know, next time these people get, they get arrested, their DNA is collected, then we can trace them back to the IEDs. And tracing the IEDs often leads them out of Afghanistan. A lot of stuff comes from Pakistan. Not much good stuff. And so my next destination, Pakistan, to look for the source. This country is a U.S. ally. It's received 20 billion American dollars since 9-11. But according to the U.S. military, as much as 75% of the material used in bombs in Afghanistan come from one place. This is Pak Arab, the largest fertilizer producer in Pakistan. Last year it made 350,000 tons of something called calcium ammonium nitrate. And that's what this is, a bag of calcium ammonium nitrate from Pak Arab. It's just small little white pellets, doesn't smell like anything, and it's sold everywhere in Pakistan. It's legal here. It's used for farming and agriculture. But if you take this and add fuel and add a detonation device, you can create an IED. Just like the Taliban did in this propaganda video. The same bags we found for sale are often smuggled into Afghanistan, where they're illegal. This summer, the U.S. Army caught 5,000 pounds of it underneath a fake floor in a truck. Pakistan's government says it's beginning to regulate the sale of calcium ammonium nitrate. But Pakistani salesmen say they aren't required to know and don't care whom they sell it to. 
For God's sakes, it's not poison, this shopkeeper told us. Well, actually, it can be much worse than poison, as this man knows well. And how much ammonium nitrate did you need to create a bomb? Fifteen pounds is enough, he says. Meet Saeed Mohammed. He helped kill a female politician and a religious leader in Kandahar with IEDs brought from Pakistan. I met him in jail in Kabul. Making explosives isn't that difficult, he says. We took the fertilizer, connected the detonator, and a remote. It's easy. It's even been easy in the U.S. Seventeen years ago, Timothy McVeigh blew up the Oklahoma City Federal Building with ammonium nitrate. Congress didn't approve legislation to track it until this year. The U.S. is asking Pakistan to regulate it in months. Pak Arab has sent a version of its calcium ammonium nitrate to the Pentagon so it can be easily tracked. But that's a long-term solution. Schofield and Klingon still have a lot of work to do. Because this is the sad fact. No matter how many missions these men execute, Fire in the hole. no matter how many bombs they defuse, unless the flow of calcium ammonium nitrate is stopped, IEDs will continue to explode and kill more and more U.S. soldiers. For Nightline, I'm Nick Schifrin in Logar, Afghanistan.